<laughs> I usually put loads of makeup on before the show because I'm a pizza face. Would you like pepperoni or cheese? Katy Perry has released six studio albums, 39 singles. Throughout her career, she sold over 48 million, million album units. She is one of the best music artists of all time. And currently, she holds the record for the most 5 million selling singles in the United States. She's got six of her singles selling over five million. In order of their release, they are Hot and Cold, California Girls, Fireworks, E.T. Raw, and Dark Horse. Recently, she attended King Charles' coronation, became a meme, couldn't find a seat. It was hilarious. Ha ha. Lol. Then the day after, she performed at the coronation concert wearing what must be one of the most stunning dresses I have ever seen. She came out literally dripping in gold. It was absolutely beautiful. Honestly, I expected her to come out with some kind of cartoonish type, you know, big, vibrant, flamboyant outfit, but instead she comes out in this gold thing. It was absolutely stunning. She looked like some kind of Egyptian goddess. It was crazy. But I digress, that is all about Katy Perry. Now, what you want to know is how did Katy Perry get to this point? Where was Katy before all of this? Where was Katy before she was famous? And how did Katy Perry even become famous? Well, that is what we're gonna go through. So let's backtrack to the beginning. Real name, Catherine Elizabeth Hudson. Katy Perry was born October the 25th, 1984. October the 25th is two days before my birthday, if anyone cares. She was raised in Southern California, the middle child of two born-again Christian ministers. Her family was mad religious, like crazy religious. She was not allowed, even though she was very musically inclined and shown from a very early age that she had both a talent and an ambition in music. Her household, the Hudson household, was strictly non-religious music. She wasn't allowed to listen to anything that wasn't religious. This is my God, and um, please do what you can, receive salvation. And it's all about, you know, furthering the kingdom. That's cheese ball sounding, but I, I guess I am. But her parents were encouraging. They wanted to encourage her passion. So they signed her up for vocal lessons. And from between the ages of nine and 16, she was taking vocal lessons. At the age of nine, she started singing in her parents' church. So she was singing, you know, Christian hymns and gospel tunes. She was a church girl. At the age of 13, she got her first guitar, started learning to play guitar, and she really got serious about music at this age. She moved to Nashville to pursue a career in music, and she actually ended up signing with a Christian record label, which is crazy to think, because Katy Perry, you think, like, camp, flamboyant, bit, a little bit saucy, you know, a little bit sassy. I kissed a girl, California girls, there's a theme throughout her music which isn't coinciding with religious music. But this is who she was and this is what she did. And in fact, when you look at the life of a lot of pop stars, a lot of them start like this, where it's always, it's forbidden. Or just anyone, really, with a talent. It's like whatever's forbidden when they're a kid, they really get into it and they want to do it well to kind of prove a point. I suppose... If you're going to go against what your parents say, you're going to want to make it a success, right? But we see this all the time. But 
point being, Katy Perry signed up to a Christian record label, singing gospel tunes. She released an album 2001, which was self-titled Katie Hudson. Remember, she's still going as Katie Hudson at this point. The album was a flop. It sold only about 200 units, and then afterwards, the record label ended up going bankrupt. So there was no more, there was no more of that. That was very short-lived for our Katie Hudson. At this point is when she started discovering pop music through her friends and her friend group. She would go to a friend's house, go out with her friends. They would play non-religious music, pop music. She was really loving this. So in secret, behind closed doors, she was all about the pop music. Then she ended up upping and leaving. She left and moved to LA to once again pursue a music career. This time, she was going against the religious thing. She was going to make it for herself as a pop star. For somebody to, you know, rip the nice pretty bow off of Christianity and just tell it like it is. Um, because we've been beating around the bush for so many years and slapping, you know, nice Christian music on everything. And it's got a good beat. It's got a nice positive woo-woo. Um, this is also when she changed her name from Katie Hudson to Katie Perry. Now, I know a lot of people would assume this is the kind of, so she could pursue this career without her parents necessarily knowing what she's doing. Well, that wasn't the case. Perry was her mother's maiden name, and there was already a famous actor called Kate Hudson. So she didn't want to have any confusion between Katie Hudson and Kate Hudson. So she just thought, take my mother's maiden name and became Katie Perry. I don't necessarily care if I do move there, but being a West Coast girl is kind of like you just, you have, and when people, when you're, when you say, oh, I'm from California, you automatically kind of have this like in where you're like either, okay, she's just a weird one because the culture is so different there. Like our humor is so different and like the way just we are, we're just so much more sporadic than in the North or the South. And I just like having that. And growing up, I lived in like nine different places. so. I've got like a little piece of every state that's come along with me, so I'm kind of, you know, odd. Her initial efforts at mainstream stardom were fruitless, with two separate record labels signing her and then subsequently dropping her before any material was even released. One of those was Def Jam and I believe the other one was Columbia Records. Around this time, she started dating Travi McCoy. This was around 2006. Travi McCoy was the frontman of Gym Class Heroes, which, once again, I absolutely loved Gym Class Heroes. They both met in a recording studio. You know, Katy Perry was just making her way up. She was trying to break through into the mainstream, and Gym Class Heroes had just released their second album at this point and were reaping the benefits of that. They were very successful. This was probably the pinnacle of Gym Class Heroes. Obviously afterwards, Travis McCoy went off on his own. You know, he did songs like Billionaire with Bruno Mars, another banger. But this was Gym Class Heroes, the pinnacle of their career. So they started dating. They were together for about two years. A little factoid for you. Katy Perry actually appears in the Gym Class Heroes music video for Cupid's Chokehold, which was a great song, if you remember it. It went like this. Take a look at my girlfriend. girlfriend. She's the only one I got. Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Not much of a girlfriend. I never seem to get a lot. I'm not a singer, but it was an absolute tune. It was a bop. It was the boppiest of bops. Well, in that song, it's all about Travis McCoy going through all these girls, right? The one at the end, the one who he finally sticks with in the music video, that right there, that's Katy Perry back in 2006, just as she was trying to break through. So a lot of people always say that Travis McCoy is to thank for Katy Perry's music career. The truth is that it didn't really have that much impact. Like I said, they met at a recording studio. She was already trying to make a name for herself. So this didn't really have much impact, but a lot of people do think Travis McCoy gave people the right names and really kick-started things for her. But I've got, you know, I digress on that. I don't think that's the case at all. I think she was doing her own thing just because Gym Class Heroes was doing so well. And then soon after this is when Katy Perry 
really broke through. It doesn't necessarily mean the two things are connected, but hey, ho, that's for you to, to decide, I guess. That's for your own, your own opinion. So one year after that, 2007, Katy Perry actually ended up signing with Capitol Records and put out her first official EP, You're So Gay. <laughs> Anyone remembers this song? I used to, I forgot all about this until researching and I used to listen to this all the time. Came out in 2007, right? It has not aged well at all. But it was a really good song. I really liked it. I used to listen to it all the time. I used to play like little computer games and I'd have it on in the background. It just has such like a good melody to it. Like the instrumental, the background was so catchy. It was so, it was such a relaxing song. Now, I'm not going to say that I was on the Katy Perry train as soon as it left the station, trying to claim I was one of the first fans, but all I'm saying is this song came out in 2007, and I have vivid memories of just playing that again and again on YouTube in around 2007, 2008. So if you want to thank anyone for the success of her careers and those first initial views that really gave the, um, the record company the confidence to work with her more, I'm just saying, you could thank me for it. You could. After that, 2008, she released her first album. Well, her first proper album. Her first successful album, which was called One of the Boys. That included the hit song, I Kissed a Girl. So she went from religious music to You're So Gay to I Kissed a Girl. This was a smash hit. Obviously, we all know about this. It was another song that I used to listen to mind the pun, religiously. That whole thing led to various other smash hits. You know, I think the thing with Katy Perry is she had this such unique style. I remember back in this day, it was all about that kind of hipster, but they like the original hipster, polka dot dress, kind of Lego haircut type thing, big puffy hair, which really gave her a characteristic. Now it's all about like the bright colors and the vibrant and the cartoonness of the whole thing. But it's such a unique style that you can say, if I say colourful dress, cartoony outfit, you kind of think, oh, Katy Perry. I think it's important to have that character, even if it's not necessarily how you hold yourself in real life, but just an elevation of how you are really helps people remember you and really helps, you know, it creates this kind of unique point of sale for yourself. But this isn't a marketing video. Anyway, I'm just saying that would have helped with her gaining a fan base. What really helped though is that the songs were absolutely bangalicious. If that is a song, they were very good. She released lots and lots of good songs. She was also in the newspapers a lot, tabloids a lot, be it relationship stuff, such as her infamous relationship with Russell Brand or Orlando Bloom, and whether that be for good or bad. Marrying Russell Brand, yay. Divorcing him, ooh, not so good. Getting together with Orlando Bloom, having a kid. Ooh, good, good news, good tabloids. Orlando Bloom cheating on Katy Perry with Selena Gomez. Scandalous, not very good. Um, if you want to know more about that, I've done a whole documentary about the life and times of Selena Gomez. Check that out, it's right in the middle. Boom, Orlando Bloom section. Have a little watch of that. Point being, she was in the news a lot, she was releasing really good songs, and she had a unique style. It all helped really propel her stardom. It blew up, and we know the rest of it, because that is when Katy Perry became famous, and that is how we know her today. So that is the life and times of Katy Perry before she was famous, what she was doing, and how she worked her way up to stardom and Katy Perry, man. Do you like her? Do you not? Whether you do or not, she is one of the most successful female artists of our time, and you've got to give her that. Until the next video, goodbye.